All right, I want to read to you this article uh, from the Riverhead News Review on climate change. This is a column, this is an editorial, uh -uh, but um, we're seeing the effects of climate change right here on Long Island, and uh, I want to read this to you, uh, and this is about uh, particularly the Peconic Bay. So it says, tide levels in the Peconic Bay are high and higher nowadays, and this is having a profound repercussion in a number of critical areas. So, for example, the company that owns the North Ferry, which provides service between Greenport and Shelter Island, is working on raising the level of its passenger dock on the Greenport side, where cars can drive to the ferry to board the ferry by 16 inches to accommodate already higher tides as well as those expected in the future. That company, the Heights Property Owners Corporation, will also lengthen the ramps cars drive onto to reach the ferry. The ramps will need to be longer because low tides are now more extreme. Once the work is completed in Greenport, the company will do similar work on Shelter Island. We're doing this to be proactive and get ahead of it, said Bridge Hunt, the ferry general manager. We have seen changes and have had to deal with these changes and anticipate what is coming. In recent years, Mr. Hunt said the high tides have been routinely higher and storms, named and unnamed, have funneled massive amounts of water between two forks at higher levels on a more regular basis, punching it up into narrow creeks and onto land. That's why the company has had to raise its dock level and why it has had to temporarily suspend service twice in recent months to deal with docking issues during very high tides once for as long as 90 minutes. There are places in our area where higher tides have pushed sand, beach gravel, and shell material onto critical wetland habitats, threatening to choke them. In one spot on the north shore of East Marion, the Grayson storm of January 2018 sliced down the embankment in front of one property, scooping out more than 37,000 cubic yards of sand and gravel and deposited into Long Island Sound. It looked like a giant blade simply sliced down the embankment, said South Hold Tr Trustees President Mike Domino. Mr. Domino said that the Grayson storm removed a total of more than 117,000 cubic yards of material along 24 miles of Long Island Sound beachfront. All that material was essentially dragged into the sound. The Peconic Bay system compromises approximately 155,000 acres. Just an inch of rain adds 4.2 billion gallons of water to that system. A 5-inch rainfall brings another 20 billion gallons. And higher charge resulting from a nor'easter during a heavy rainstorm, plus runoff from soaked ground, and that number rises even higher. Superstorm Sandy in October 2012 is considered a talking point in terms of high tides, but the January 2019 nor'easter that hit our area brought water levels comparable to Sandy, according to Town Trustees Vice President John Bredemeyer. Overtopping bulkheads and destroying environmental plantings behind them that were designed as permanent features. Mr. Bredemeyer also pointed out se several areas where the impact of higher tides can be seen. In Orient Harbor, the natural barrier between the harbor and Peter, Peter's Neck Creek has migrated landward in several areas up of, of 75 to 100 feet, overtopping the historic ridge of Upper Marsh that is the uh, barrier protecting the wetlands. Orient Beach State Park has sustained a massive loss of several cubic yards of beach aggregate adjacent to the park road. Loss of beach height ranges up to 5 feet are seen in the park. Sand migration within Hylix Bay is now increasingly filling intertidal wetlands there. And the Grayson storm uniformly cut the toe of the typically vegetated and stable Long Island Sound Bluff from Orient to Laurel, destroying brand new bluff stairs and bulkheads designed to last in excess of 30 years. What we are seeing is on an almost daily basis said Mr. Bredemeyer, the tide is higher and it comes with less encouragement from the storms. To Mr. Hunt, whose, property, whose company's business is on the water, these higher tides are less episodic and more of a trend. We've had hurricanes in Nor'easters where this has happened, but now less wind brings that ramp to the, this extreme height and where the ferries can't be offloaded. Greenport Village trustee Mary Bess Phillips, whose family is in the fishing business, 
said, Years ago, in a storm, my front yard would not be flooded. Now, with each storm, it is coming up on the yard. Stifling Har Sterling Harbor is a prime example of what is going on. She said, Silver Lake, a pond between Main Road and Moore's Lane, that is connected to Conic Bay by what's called Moore's Drain, is being threatened by higher tides. It can't drain because the tides are so high, Miss Phillips said. She added that she's worried higher tides will endanger the village sewer system. If the water is higher than the drains, nothing will get out, and this could impact the system. The South Hall trustees are, per are a permitting agency. They do not write code or make policy, but they see with every application and every post-storm inspection what is going on around them. I understand antecedental evidence and a scientific metric, Mr. Domino said. We are certainly seeing more storms, stronger storms, and more flooding per cycle in areas that historically flooded during major events. The trustees recognize the need for a comprehensive regional approach. The ferry people are doing the right thing, but it won't solve the larger issue. An ad hoc approach doesn't work. This is beyond an individual issue. We have to all get together on this. So um, this is all what's going on with climate change, and the sea levels are rising. It is happening, and we have sea level rise and worse storms. So that's why all this investment that's going on along the water is a waste of money that's going to get washed away. And we need to start investing in our towns away from the water in the middle of the island because uh, the South Shore will be underwater, and it could happen a lot sooner than you think. Uh, you know, sea levels are rising, and we're very close to a blue ocean event possibly this year uh, and uh, I'll be talking about that in another video because it's getting uh, we're seeing the ice melt very quickly in the Arctic and once we have no ice in the Arctic it will be only a matter of a decade before the Arctic is ice free year round and that has huge ramifications for the sea level so um, that's going to be it for this video thank you for watching